Welcome back, Dr. Richard Washington. Thank God for a return of our pastor. We are excited about the opportunity to grow with you this year. We love you. Greetings, St. John family, and welcome to today's virtual worship experience. Please be reminded that members of the finance team will be here today from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. to receive your tithes and offerings. You may also take advantage of use of our cash app. Please be reminded that God loves a cheerful giver. And now let us be blessed with a word from our pastor, Reverend Washington. Good morning. This is a day the Lord has made and we rejoice and we're glad in it. I am Richard Allen Washington and I serve as the pastor of St. John Church here in the Fountain City area of Columbus, Georgia. Let me welcome you back this week to a period where God will speak to you. I believe this, if you walk with God, God will walk with you. Let's together walk together through the word of God for an empowering special message that God has for each one of you as you tuned in this morning. I wanna invite you to a brand new opportunity to fellowship with God and to hear God speak to you through your dilemma, your circumstances, and your situation. I'm glad you're here this morning and let me again thank you for tuning in. I pray that you would subscribe to this YouTube channel. I pray that you would tune in with us each week as God reveals to us the plans that God has for us through the word of God. Remember, here at St. John, we love God. We believe the word of God and everything it says about us, and we are becoming everything that God has intended for each one of us to become. Let's go to God in prayer. We'll read the scripture, and then we'll hear from God. Gracious God, on this wonderful morning, we give thanks to you. In this season of Lent, we pause to invite you to speak clearly and certainly to the situations we are dealing with. We pray that as we sacrifice, as we surrender, as we tune to you and your word for the guidance and the goodness of your wisdom, that you will bless us. Speak to us, O Lord. Our servants are listening, and I pray that you would utilize this, your servant, bringing to mind and to heart and even to body, everything necessary to edify the body of believers today through Christ who is Lord. It is our prayer that anyone at any time who listens to this broadcast will be blessed in a way that they have never understood but needed. In Jesus' name, we do lift this prayer, amen. Thank you so kindly. I am reminded this past week during the annual conference that we had here in the southwest part of the state of Georgia that it is vital that you know that you don't know who is listening and looking at your life. And I want everyone who listens and looks at this to understand that God is gonna bless you even if it's burdening you at this moment. So let's see how God wants to lead us. We finished a wonderful series on last Sunday. And guess what? We're looking to finish and go into something special on today. I wanna to invite you to come on with me to the Old Testament, to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, if you will, and verses 1 through 13. It's important that you turn to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 is where we start and we look to conclude at verse 13. That's the historical section of the Bible. The Bible has sections. The first five are the books of the law that tell us how to relate to people and God. And then you go to the historical section, the history section which tries to express and understand for humanity how God moves in the course of our human history of those who have chosen to follow God. Let's go now to the history section to see how God will bless us because this Sunday we choose to follow God. The rendering which I share with you is the English translation. The scriptures say these words to us. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and go. 
I will send you to the Bethlehemite named Jesse, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he's going to kill me. The Lord said, take a heifer and say, I have come to offer sacrifice to the Lord and invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what I will do. And you shall anoint for, me, for him what I declare to you. Samuel did just what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him and they were trembling. Do you come in peace? And he said, peace, peacefully, I come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eleb and thought, surely the Lord anointed this one before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on his height or on his statue, for I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as humanity sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called another son, and he passed before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass before. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel said to Jesse, are all of these the sons you have? And Jesse said, there remains one. He's the youngest, but he is in the field keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. Go get him, for I will not sit down until he gets here. And Jesse sent and brought him in. Now he was the Rudy of the group. He had beautiful eyes and was considered attractive. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, anointed him in the midst of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose and went to Raham. Amen. This morning, I want to invite you in the Lent season to a very important topic and subject matter that will bless your Lent season. Learn to live inside out. Learn to live inside out or learning to live inside out. Do you know what it's like to be chosen? Do you understand the dynamics that go into a choosing process? Do you remember the times in your life when you have been the recipient of being chosen by others for particular kinds of circumstances. If we're honest, all of us in the course of our human lives in the United States of America have endured the process in some way of being chosen by an organization, by a particular group of people, or by a person in relationship. A part of American culture is to wrestle with the choice that we have. America has actually capitalized on the process of choosing someone. Organizations, Greek lettered organizations and secret service organizations often work hard to make their choosing process private and secretive. Also, my brothers and sisters' jobs have historically made the hiring process in some ways secretive. Being chosen is something that everyone has experienced or re being rejected because you're not chosen is as well. Well, brother and sister, where does all of this choosing come from? 
As a matter of fact, if we look at human history, human history is full of societies, of communities, of civilizations where people have worked through the dilemmas of being chosen or rejected. My brother and sister, these cities, citizens, and even societies that are often working their way through handling the choice of being selected or not is vital to our lives. We can learn a lot from characters in the human history and how they have survived the process of being chosen or not being chosen. This morning, God has directed our attention, mine in particular, to a fascinating and amazing story of people and the struggle of being chosen. We find our way through the biblical narrative and something you need to be aware of, something that hit me this morning, well, actually this week, that when we read scripture, we are reading persons who have written in the name of God. We are reading the story, the testimony, and the historical significance of persons who have sat down patiently with a group or themselves and crafted an understanding of how God has moved through the history of people who have chosen God. I want to make sure that you understand you are not reading the life stories of happenstance personalities. You are reading the story of persons who have been chosen by God, but also have decided to live on the premises, principles, and behaviors that God has instructed. What am I saying this morning? I am suggesting that the Bible is not just a collection of stories of people who God has blessed, it is the collection of stories of how people have been dealing with being chosen or rejected or put on hold in their lifetime. The authors who constructed the biblical accounts of the chosen people of God often were trying to discover ways of connecting God's presence to the lives of those who were choosing God all the time. And I need you to catch this this morning in the introduction, because every now and then we need to look back and reauthor some of the storylines in our own lives. We need to be able to find God's presence in the circumstances that we have gone through, in the current conditions that we are wrestling with. And it helps us to understand how God is going to move heading forward. I want to be specific with you this morning that in the midst of this Lent season, that it's going to take you and I and families and communities of faith having a moment of reauthoring, re-narrating, restructuring, not the story, but how we have seen the story. You've got to be willing to find God active, alive, and as I often say, connect the dots where God is working in your life. The authors of the historical books of the Bible in the history section are attempting to help people who read and who hear these stories understand how God has been actively present in their lives. It's important that you understand in the 16th chapter of the first book of the Samuel's collection, in the 16th chapter in 1 Samuel, you and I have to wrestle and read with how God shows up in the lives of the children of God. Those who chose to follow God in quiet moments are now having to live with God's presence in a way that they didn't even recognize. Oh, I wanna put a pin right there. And I wanna help someone this morning understand that while you have moved through historical moments in your life and may never have recognized God working, I want you to understand this this morning, that God has been present in your life, even when you and I did not recognize. The reality is the authors of the book of Samuel are attempting to help the people of God see God at work in their journey when they have not been able to recognize God. You know recognition is important, and you understand that in recognition we can see God when we can't trace God. And beloved, on the 16th chapter, a character is introduced to us that is going to transform tribal life to a life in monocracy. It's going to transform being led by tribes to the life that God has destined them for to be led by one individual. It's the story of how God works through human failure 
and fatigue and frustration and even ignorance to craft, to correct, and even to constructively put in place the will of God. How do we watch God in our own life craft, correct, structure, realign, and get this even tune you into the direction that God wants you to go? How are you in the current circumstances going to find God working things out for the way that God is desiring to structure your life? Let me, let me pause and say it is by no accident that you are and I am where we are. Preach, Richard. We are here in the very moment where God has chosen for us to be. If God desired us to be anywhere else, if God desired us to be dealing with anything else, we would be right there. But the fact of this moment is that God structured your life and mine to be exactly where we are in this moment. And every sickness, every disappointment, every success, every thankful moment of survival have all been choreographed by God as the author, watch this, and the finisher of your faith. And in the 16th chapter, I just today desire to share with you a couple of ideas of how you can spot God working in your world right now. The text delivers us a fascinating story of an unknown who will become known. That's a word. You may be unknown right now, you may be unsuspecting right now, but in the future of your life, God is going to introduce you through an unusual way to the rest of the world for the will of God. Oh, somebody ought to get excited that what you're doing now that seems to draw no attention, that what you're doing now that seems to get you no accolade, that what you're doing now that no one has said thank you for, is actually a part of the plan of God to watch this. Choose you to get actively moving toward the will that God has for the greater community. Your life is a part of something much greater. And I got to pause and say that each and every one of us, by way of this introduction, needs to be aware that we're a part of a greater plan for a greater people, you can't give in and you can't give up and you can't quit because you're a part of a larger plan. You, you got to see your life in a larger context. That's the introduction. Welcome to the text. We find the wonderful, exciting, and overwhelmingly challenging story now in chapter 16 and verses 1 through 13 of an unusual character who God is working through. The Bible says that Samuel is actually grieving the loss of a fellow by the name of Saul. And God says, remove yourself from where you sit. It's been long enough. Walk from this place because I have chosen the replacement. I want you to know something, that every now and then, after grieving what did not happen, what you participated and gave yourself to, but it did not work out. You've gotta be careful that you don't get stuck in what you thought should have been and miss what God intends to be. Get up in this Lent season, get yourself up from where you are soaring and walk toward where God is moving. He gets Samuel up, who was his preacher, his pastor of a community of people. And he says, I've decided to anoint someone from the household of a Bethlehemite named Jesse. And he tells him where to go and he tells him what to take and he tells him how to get there. And I like what you see between the preacher, Pastor Samuel and God. Samuel expresses his vulnerability, saying that I could die if I just roll up in there. And God crafts a plan for the preacher slash pastor to get where God wants him to be. In your life, pastor, in your life, preacher, God will craft a plan 
that you and I have to follow. And it will get us exactly where God desires us to be for his use and his glory. The plan works. He arrives in the particular place and he's instructed as he follows the instructions. He invites a fellow by the name of Jesse and his family, his sons particular, to a particular feast and festival moment. And there Jesse presents the sons that he has. And Samuel exposes something that you and I need to understand that made me name this sermon living from the inside out. Samuel looks on the sight of the first son and he is attractive. But the Lord says, lesson number one, while you are looking on the exterior of life, I am taking this moment to tell you a little bit about my character. Never in scripture until this moment has God said specifically what God's looking for and how God sees us. Missed your shout moment. God does not see the exterior over what God sees as the interior. God sees our heart more than God pays attention to the looks of the outside. Beloved, I want you to know that we might need to learn how to live from the inside out rather than what culture and America is trying to force upon us in social media and other marketing strategies that is to live from the outside in. Beloved, we got to. We got to understand in this very moment that it is necessary that the way of God is to look at people from their inside. I got to get out of here because it's time to go. In lesson number one, how are you perceiving yourself? Remember the history of the people of God needs to see God at work in their journey now. And sometimes they have exegetically, I must say, they have been looking at God from the outside in when they should have been watching God work from the inside out. And that's why I need you to understand right now that you and I have got to watch God from the inside instead of from the outside. God is is building you from your inside. Samuel made the mistake of being consumed by the looks and the statue and the appearance of the people that Jesse, his sons were from the outside in. I, I gotta get out of here. I'll be back next week. Well, you know what that means. This is a series, living from the inside out. And God wants us during this Lent season to watch from the inside out, I've learned that what looks a failure on the outside is the making of a success story from the inside. I, I wanna parallel something real quick. I gotta get this in. When I was reading this story of how David is chosen as the leader of God's people from tribe to monarchy, I, I, I noticed that there were some similarities between David and the story of Joseph. Both lived and were favorites of their father. Both were hated on by their brothers. Both were sheep or working as shepherds in the fields of their fathers. Both were, go, were sent to look for their brothers. Both were chosen for leadership in seasons and anointed when they were not at that moment selected. Woo. There are some moments in our life where God has selected us for certain places and certain positions, but not at that time. I want you to know you can be selected to be the CEO of a particular company, but not in 2023. You can be selected by God to be the president of a corporation or even the president of your own business, but it won't develop in this year. I'm trying to prepare you that you've got to look at life from the inside out. You've got to look at how God's going to bless you from the inside out. You've got to understand that the greatest blessing and the work of God is never in material things, but in God transforming your life from your inside. Joseph and David are selected 
and superstars, but it doesn't happen in the moment that they are drafted. Ooh, you missed your shout point. You've been drafted, but you're not yet in the place where you know God's gifted you to be. Come here. Joseph knew who he was, but he had to wait and be developed through the process of success and failure and struggle. David recognized in this text who he would be because Samuel told it, but he had to wait and go back, watch this, to handling sheep before he becomes the all of all. And get this, both David and Joseph are connected whew, to the Messiah named Jesus. Every time God has worked in the history of humanity to get humanity where it needs to be, it has been God choosing to work from the inside of humanity to the outside. And I'm just tickled that God will work on us from the inside to the outside. This is what it means. It won't cost us any more money to get our inside together than it will get our outside together. It won't cost you an extra dime to try to ask God to create in you a clean heart and renew in you the right kind of spirit that will help you endure the trials and the tests, the struggles and the strains, the ups and the downs. It won't cost you another dime to hold to God's unchanging hand. I've come to tell you, live, learn how to live from the inside out, starting with what we share today. What did we share? What have you heard that God's choosing and qualifying won't look like the world? What you've heard today is that God is actively present in your life. You gotta look back and reauthor some of the memories that you thought made you less and understand that they were making you more. You gotta recognize that everybody that's chosen doesn't look like you think they ought to look. And let me share this with you. We're all chosen for the glory of God. We have to choose ourselves if we're willing to work through it. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I will be back next week with part two of learning how to live from the inside out. This is just the introduction. Let's come back next week and try to find more of God at work. God bless you, be encouraged, and I wish you the best. Peace.